Right, so someone's been here after me. For some reason they've removed the green cover and the diverter and now and reopened the cold inlet and now the water's gone onto the motor connection so we'll have to dry that out as well. Just about to start on this uh, flow turbine adapter. Isolate the cold mains, remove that nut there, move that pipe and pull it out and see what we got. Right, so got the uh, cold water pipe out, disconnected the flow turbine from the copper. It's going to have a clean of that filter in there, and then we'll have a look inside there and see how badly damaged this uh, flow turbine adapter is. So the leak is definitely coming from the adapter. And there you can see the water just sitting at the bottom. Now, when we pull this out, it is likely to break inside, um, which is typical of these, but let's see how we get on. Long nose pliers, bent long nose pliers, let's see if we can tease it out. Okay, that felt like it came out in one piece. Let's see. Nope, that's half of it. The other half's still in there, so now we've got to pick that up. Let's see the flow restrictor, make sure we put that goes in the right order and now pick up the other bit of broken plastic. Here she comes, there we go. I'll show you the completed one in just a moment, but that's basically how it's come out in pieces. And in there, luckily so, top one is the broken one, you can see that the thread has just snapped off inside here. And this typically happens on this Worcester, this plastic is actually so brittle, it just breaks. Taking the flow restrictor out, I'm going to put that in here, put this back together and then we'll get that back in there. So that's how the complete version should look, with the cap screwed on, flow restrictor in, it's going to grease up these o-rings and then pop it in. Don't be afraid to be very liberal with the silicone grease. The more you use, the better it will actually help you out getting this in. Grease up the o-ring there. Always put a bit of smear of silicone grease inside both ends of the flow turbine. And now let's try and, oh, let me get the torch so you guys can see a bit better. Right. Push that straight in, get it in there, and on it here nice, there we go, it's pushed in home. Next, flow, tur flow turbine, check the arrow, arrow is pointing, I don't know if you can see the light, pointing down, so that's the direction of the flow of water, so that means that's got to go in this way, so line that up, and next we're going to push that in. I'll be back in a minute. We're getting the pipe on as well. Right, cold pipe is in. Haven't tightened that up yet. And the bit that usually takes people the longest is getting this clip in. I'm going to try and do it one handed. If not, I might have to stop the video and then come back once it's on. <laughs> I think I can do this one-handed. Nope, right, let me uh, pause this and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, and we're in. Wasn't actually as bad as I thought it would be. It's such a shit design from Worcester. This pipe at the top gets in the bloody way of the clip going down, but we work our way around it and we get the job done. Right, all connections are tight, as far as I know. Now, moment of truth. I want you guys to see, sometimes things may not go right, so if it leaks, it leaks, we'll have to fix it, if not, let's see. It's turning on the cold mains. Come on. That's a good sound. I have left a hot tap running, so, so far so good. Let's go and turn the hot tap off and see if it holds the pressure. Right, hot tap is off, so that is now holding under full pressure, no leaks there, no leaks anywhere there. 
looking good. Change the fiber washer on the uh, cold water connection as well. There's the old one. It's not worth taking the risk of using the old fiber washer, just change it for a new one, the pennies anyway. Now let's uh, put the diverter motor back on and give it a test. Lovely. That's the uh, oil running for hot water. No drips. You are good to go. Hot pipe is getting hot. Yeah. Job done.